Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to today's show. It is Russ, and today I am with the incredible, the brilliant, the absolute revolutionary sales and enrollment genius, Mr. Mark Von Muser, who is Hello. our director of sales here at Clients on Demand. And today what we're gonna be talking about is we're gonna be addressing sort of a hot topic in the coaching industry, which is, or any service business industry really, is is when people say, hey, I need to think about it. You know, you're on the phone with a potential prospect, call's going great, you know that they're a fit, they feel that they're a fit, it just seems like a match made in heaven and they absolutely need what you have. Then they hit you with, hey, I gotta think about it. What should you do? Should you let them go think about it or should you actually push them to make a decision or at least encourage them or incentivize them to make a decision right then, right there on that call? So that's a really big topic, guys, because it can, it can. I mean, my God, if you don't get this question right, it could literally cost you millions of dollars in your business. And I think about our business. If we didn't, if we didn't know the answer to this and we, we went the other way, we would have lost millions of dollars last year. And, and not only that, but it would have seriously affected our ability to, to make a difference in our clients' lives and in people's lives. So it's a big, big topic. It's important not just for you and your business, but it's also important for the clients and the people that you want to work with as well and the impact that you want to make. So guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Jump in the comments real quick. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Let me know if you guys can see me. Um, just got It's off camera, but I, I just got a brand new iMac Pro right oh, here. Oh, nice. So it's literally sitting here, <laughs> sitting here on my desk. I think it's smarter than I am. This computer is so fast, like I'm going to turn it on and it's going to be like, really? Is that what you're wearing today? Is your current computer still fighting and, and trying to hold on for? No, nah, my current computer's fine. It just, you know, I just it's a 2013 iMac, and it's like, okay, that was six years ago. It was the last time I got a new computer, and it still works great. But I'm like, you know, this is this is what we do. We do this stuff online, so I gotta have a, you know, I have to have a state of the art, state of the art computer, right? I, I don't know. It's probably I probably don't even need it, but whatever. Um, cool guys. All right, so let's see who's here. Karen's here. Ryan Karen, is here. Ryan Jeremy, said. Latressa, Desmond, Emily, Biggie trip rana and guys welcome 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 so as we go through this topic today if there's anything in here that like resonates with you anything that you want us to go deeper into and explain any questions that you have just drop a comment and we'll try to respond to those in real time as we go through this topic so mark what do you think man should you let clients think about it when they hit you with oh my god i gotta think about it well, the, the obvious answer is no. It's again, you're going to have these people for roughly one hour in a lifetime of 350,000 to 500,000 hours. So you've got one hour to get to the truth of their problem. And just one of the things that we were talking about before, one of the first things, Russ, is objects in motion tend to stay in motion. And so what happens is that when somebody is like, oh, you know, I want to think about it and oh, I want to, you know, let me sleep on it. Let me think on it. Yes, one or two out of 100 will come back, but 98 or so are going to keep doing what they, what they did that didn't work. And so one of the things that we have just found is that the entire purpose of the call, the marketing, is to identify people, to have them raise their hand to say, you know what, I know I have a problem. I know it's not working. It's costing me here, here, and here. And now all of a sudden, if we make them an offer and we walk them through the process and we know their problem, we can help them solve the problem, the value exceeds the investment, there's no reason to think about it. And at the end of the day, what the reason why I, I love the word betray is because what we're doing is we're allowing the, the non-expert in this problem, them, allow them to decide, oh, you know what, they want to go think about it. It's kind of like going to a doctor. He's the expert. Yes, I can help you. Yes, we can do it. Yes, you have terminal cancer. Yes, we can help you solve it, but we got to get started. So you tell me what you want to do. If you want to go back, sleep on it, come back and work in my schedule. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, that's a scary thought. A lot of people are afraid to own their expertise in that field. And when you guys truly believe your business and you truly know you can help them, I believe you have a moral obligation to do everything in your power on that hour to do everything you can to get them to recognize we can solve it. Your life can be better. Let me help you. And when you let them think about it, they're not the expert on this problem or how it will solve. Yeah. So and Mark, that's huge because I think the framing around this is very, very important. 
if you're talking about browbeating somebody into a sale, right? Or, or browbeating somebody into buying something that they don't need. And it's like, oh, don't let them off the phone because they don't they don't even need this thing. But I've got them, yeah. you know, I got them going. They're going to say yes. If they're going to say yes, you know, they got to make a decision right now. That's the opposite of what we're talking about. And it, and it really does come down to the kind of enrollment and sales conversation you are having, right? Mm -hmm. If you're doing it the old school way, the boiler room way, where you're basically just kind of cutting off all their avenues and you've got your little conversation tree. And it's like, if they say this, I'm going to say that. If they zig, I'm going to zag. And everything is designed to take away their power of decision. Then not letting people think about it is wrong. But you were wrong the moment you picked up the phone. You know, mm -hmm. the, the situation was screwed up the moment that interaction started because you never had any intention of even letting the client make a decision. Your intention was to browbeat them into buying some garbage that they don't need. Obviously, guys, I hope you've been listening to this show long enough that that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is a real situation where you have an offer that solves a specific problem and you're talking to someone who has that specific problem and you feel that they're fit and they know that they're fit to work with you and you are gonna encourage them to make that decision to change their life. So the reason guys, as Mark touched on, it's so important to try to get them to make that decision on that very first call is something called habit force. Now habit force is very, very powerful. And I just actually had this situation happen because I had a conversation about a month ago with a fitness guy and it was a high, it was a high ticket offer. And it was like, it was strange to be on the other end of, the, of that call where I'm the customer and I'm talking to him and he's offering me a high ticket program that I, I knew would solve my problem. Right. I had been eating and very, very badly and I wasn't working out and I just wasn't taking good care of myself. And I had been so bad at that, that it had become a habit guys. So think of it like this. There's a windmill almost or like a flywheel or, or something where the wheel is spinning, right? And for me, the wheel was spinning really, really, really hard in the direction of failure, okay? Now, I know that it's a problem. I know I have to do something about it. And that's the reason I reached out to this particular guy. Now, on the call, he's talking to me. He's saying, Russ, tell me what's going on. Exactly how much did you weigh this morning? When's the last time you worked out? You know, like how much weight have you gained in the last year? How much weight have you gained since you started your online business? That was the worst question of all, by the way. So, <laughs> so he's got me thinking about this where I'm getting in touch with the truth and I'm getting in touch with what's really going on. And what he's doing is I'm all in this momentum where I'm going toward failure. I'm going toward failure. And in that call, you're getting me in touch with the truth. So you're just managing to arrest that momentum enough that I start to maybe go in the other direction, Right. But if I don't make a decision right there on the call to stop going in the direction of failure and start going in the direction of success, what's going to happen? I'm going to say, hey, man, I got to think about it. I'm going to get off the call and habit force is going to kick right back in. If it's been a habit of mine to have pizza every night, what do you think I'm going to do? That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go right back into those old habits and a month from now or two months from now or three months from now, I'm going to be even worse off than I was in that conversation. And thankfully, I already knew this. So I was like, look, if I'm going to make a decision to work with this guy or not work with this guy, I'm making that decision right here on this call. But he knew it too. And if you're a smart coach or smart consultant or smart accountant or smart attorney or smart doctor or whatever you're doing, you are going to do everything you can to try to get people to make that decision on that call. Because if they don't, they're going to get home and they're going to go right back to their old habits. And so what they're telling you when they say, I have to think about it is really what they're telling you is I am afraid. I am afraid because I know that I need to do this and you know that I need to do this and I'm just afraid that I'm going to be able to make it happen. And, but you know what? It, because that person is afraid, you have to deal with that fear right then and there on the call. Because if you let them go back to their life, their old habits are going to take right over and they're going to be just, they're going to be even worse off than they were before because now they've made a decision not to do anything about it. And when you have a problem and you decide not to fix it and you decide not to fix it and you decide not to fix it, your willpower gets weaker and weaker and weaker. So those of you coaches that are listening to this and you're going like, oh man, you know, it's uncomfortable. I don't want to push people to make a decision on that first call. Let me tell you something. You have to, not for you, but for the client, because they will go right back to their old habits and you will lose the opportunity to change their life. 
you know, Mark and I were talking about this and, you know, we, we keep really, really detailed records here at COD and we, we keep really good records about who we've spoken to, what happened on the call, what the conversation was like, what the person chose to do and whatever. And, and we, we all put our heads together as a team. And I asked this question. I said, look, can you guys think of a situation where we spoke to someone who really needed our help and we made that person an offer and they said, no, I'm not interested right now, or no, I'm going to think about it. And then by themselves on their own, they went to go fix their business. That literally has never happened. Not once that I can think of in the history of the company. And I bet you it's exactly the same in your business too. If someone's coming to you because their relationship is broken and, and you're like, hey, I can help you. And they're like, no, 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 no. I'm going to go. I, I got it. Do you really think they're going to fix this problem on their own? Hell no. You know, if like if we teach webinars and Facebook ads and all these cutting edge tactics, are you going to just figure that stuff out on your own? No, it just doesn't happen. And so the decision on the call, and it's very important that you understand this too. The decision on the call that the client is making is not the decision to buy something from you or not buy something from you. It is the decision to fix this problem or to watch it get worse. And when you really understand that and internalize that, you're not going to have a problem asking for the sale. And you're not going to have a problem asking them to make the right decision because you understand it's got nothing to do with you. It's not like, oh, this person didn't sign up. Oh, I feel so rejected. No, they're not, they're not accepting you or rejecting you. They're choosing to fix their problem or they're choosing to stay stuck. And when you understand that, that gives you the moral authority to go the extra mile in that sales conversation if you know that you can really help that person. And it's a game changer guys, because at the end of the day, too many people, uh, coaches out there, you guys get caught up when you're talking to these people, you get caught up in the minutia. Oh, uh, you know, I want to talk to my cat shrink. I want to meditate on it. I want to, I have this process that I go through before I make a decision. And while that's all said and good, you know, I think it was Einstein that said, never, you cannot solve a problem with the same thinking that created it. And so it's, you know, expanding on, on what you're talking about habit force all of a sudden, it's like this, you guys get caught up in, oh, it's a lot of money. It's not. It Whatever the investment is, it's what it is. Keep the focus on the problem. It is a very simple decision that you don't need to think about. Number one, you have a problem. You want to fix it. You went through a hoop or you jumped on a call. Now you're having a conversation. And it's like, if you can just keep the conversation on that, now you might need to work out details on how to, how to get payment and the investment, but the decision is simple. There's another area of us that I want to talk about too, guys, which is remember the point of the breakthrough call, you know, truth elicitation call. Some people call them sales Discovery call, call breakthrough yeah. session, whatever, sale, whatever you want to call it. The, the point of that call is to either have a breakthrough or to get to the truth. But once you get to the truth, it is a unique moment in space and time. It's like it's clarity pops up and it's like, wow, this problem is costing me all this stuff. Do I, am I committed to fix it? And it might not be easy. It might take a while, to, you know, and, and a lot of work to fix it. But the decision is in the moment. It does not require thinking about it. It does not require, well, do I want to cure my cancer or not? Do I want to go ahead and drop hundred pounds or not? Do I want to, you know, get, get in shape or do I want my business to succeed? They probably have made that decision beforehand. And it's only us as a coach or consultant because we don't want to appear pushy that we retreat and allow their self-doubt to lead the call. So we got a bunch of great questions in the comments, guys. So let, let's just take them one by one. So Katie is asking, well, what about when someone says they need to feel about it and you sense their anxiety on the phone? Well, Katie, normally, I mean, like, look, every call is different, but for the most part, when that happens, usually one of two things happen. And Mark, you can jump in on this too, if you want to. But usually what that means is if you feel that anxiety in the other end, it means that you didn't properly create rapport in the beginning of the call. So one of the first things that we teach our clients to do at Clients on Demand is to create authentic rapport at the beginning of the call. Now, a lot of sales classes teach rapport, but they teach it like in a really cheesy sort of a way where it's like, hey, how about, oh, you're in LA. How about them Dodgers? La da 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 da, where it's just totally fake. What I, what I mean when I say rapport is I need to have a sense when you're talking to me that you have my best interest at heart. If I sense that you're on the phone with me just to make a sale, it's game over. That's going to give me fear. That's going to give me anxiety. That's going to make me lie to you because I don't trust you enough to tell you the truth. But if we get on the phone and I feel like you're in my corner and that you're not going to sell me anything unless you know and I know that it's a fit, then I will open up to you. Then I'm not going to feel anxious. I mean, I might feel, you know, a little bit of anxiety about whether I want to fix the problem or not, but that's a different story. 
if I, if I, I should never feel anxious about opening up to you and telling you anything. So that could be it. The other thing that it could be is that in the call, you're not going deep enough into the problem. You're not going deep enough into what's really going on. Because if you just deal with the problem at a surface level where it's like, let's just say we're talking about business. If I'm on the phone with you and you're telling me, well, Russ, you know, I don't have enough leads coming in. I say, okay, great. Not enough leads. I say, okay, Russ, uh, my Facebook ads aren't working. Okay, great. Facebook ads aren't working. And you just leave it at that surface level. That's not really what motivates people. What motivates people is the internal stuff. It's not the fact that they don't have enough leads. It's what's going on internally in their life to make this problem a real problem that needs to be solved. But the thing is, guys, like I said before, if you don't have rapport, you're never going to get that information. So you've got to have that rapport and trust in the beginning of the call. And then you have to go deep to explore what's really going on. Because if you do that properly, guys, what's going to happen is I'm going to understand that I have a problem and I'm going to understand what it's costing me. And you're going to understand that I have a problem and we're going to be in sync on that. And the cool thing about human beings, guys, is that most of the time when you peel away all of our excuses and rationalizations and BS and we come face to face with what's really going on, most of the time people will choose to take action. They will choose to do something about it. And so when that happens, the sale happens almost automatically. Does that make sense, guys? Um, Russ, let me stack on that. Yeah. So basically, Katie, you're asking Mark, about that over just a little bit. There it is. Okay. Stop. Free. So what we're talking about, guys, is we're helping move somebody out of their comfort zone. Their comfort zone is a reflection of their skill set, their beliefs, you know, how hard they work, what they do, the hours, everything they know and believe. But the problem is their dream is outside of that comfort zone. And what we do on the call is help them over their bridge of fear. And because we care, because we did what Russ just said, we get to the heart of the matter and the truth, and then we walk them over their fear to that. I'm okay with a little bit of, of pressure because pressure is what forces us to get out of bed, you know, go into the bathroom, uh, drink water, eat food, get up and go serve somebody. Pressure is what moves humanity. But what happens though, is that people like make it uncomfortable and they make it about me versus you. Right. But if you, you do what Russ way. said, if you do what Russ said and say, Hey, look, I'm just the guy that's the, that's going to help you walk you over your fear. It, this is a conversation between you and your dream between you and the problem and how committed you are. And if you want some help, let me help you. So it, if you understand that principle, you can keep the focus between them and their dream. And you're just a conduit or a, a tour guide to help them get there and navigate them outside of that comfort zone. And that's why it's so important to have a mentor or an expert who's done it and done it a lot. That's where you come in. So it's really important to realize anytime we move out of our comfort zone, the person that makes $30,000 a year, they will be uncomfortable taking a job for 50,000. Yes, they want it, but then they're going to go and, oh God, I hope I can deliver. I hope I don't get fired. I hope I'm good enough. And guess what? The person making 50,000, they're freaked out about 150. They don't even look at it, want ads for jobs at 150. Why? Because their comfort zone is a $50,000 mindset, a $50,000 year skill set. So that's part of why you guys are so important. Our job is to help get clarity on the problem. What is the real problem? What is it really costing them? Who else is it affecting? And then we look to see, can they, do these people want to solve it? And the sad truth is not everybody does. Right. Some of your clients and you guys are beating yourself up because you offered to help somebody and they said no. They told you they want to think about it. They, like you said, Russ, they didn't say no to you. They said no to getting their dream because they're more comfortable in their comfort zone than living in a bigger world. Guys, I hope this is sinking in because this is very, very different than the way that most quote unquote sales training is, is done. So Kimberly is asking a great question that stacks on what we were just talking about. It says, when do you cross the line though and get into the area of convincing? So here's the thing, Kimberly, if you're doing the call the way we're talking about, number one, the intent behind the call is to get to the truth. It's not to make a sale. It's not to make an enrollment because I don't know if you're a right fit for my program yet. So I got to get to the truth. And I have to help you get to the truth. So that's that's the intention behind the call. So there's nothing to convince at all. It's like, I, we're going to get to the truth. And in the process of uncovering the truth, you become convinced because you're going, you know what? I really do have a problem here and I really do have to do something about it. And so at that point, it's just a question of, of, of using the right incentives to get you to take action on what we both already know. It's not, I believe you have a problem and you don't believe you have a problem and I got to convince you that you have a problem, that's not gonna work. 
it's you and I are completely in sync. Here's what's going on. Can I help? Yes. Do you want to fix it? Yes. Great. Let's move forward. So we're doing this together. Mark says this all the time. Sales is something that someone does to you and mm -hmm. service is something that someone does with you. Enrolling is something that someone does with you. And that's the difference. So there should be almost no convincing on the call. It should be you and I exploring this problem together, getting on the same side and then just making the decision together. Do you want to do something about this? Yes. Do I want to help you? Yes. Great. Let's move forward. And the cool thing about it is if I'm talking to you and I feel that I can't help you now, I have a moral obligation to tell you that, you know, and, and, and that's the difficult part for most people is that they just want to make the sale, but that creates so much distrust because you feel like I'm not really looking out for you. If I'm doing this properly the, from the beginning of the call to the end of the call, you should feel like I'm on your side because I really am. If I'm talking to you and I'm just like, Hey, you know what? She's got a kind of a bit of a different problem or, or she's not really the kind of client that I help. I can't take your credit card no matter how much you want it. I have to have the integrity and the discipline to say, Hey, you know what? I, you know, I, I, I'm with you. I totally understand everything, but, but because of X and Y and Z, I just don't think we're fit to work together. Um, so, so I can't help you, but maybe here's somebody else who can, if I can give you that information, but, but, but I have to have the guts and the integrity to do that. Angela is asking another great question. And this is a, this is a good one, Mark. What about follow-up? If someone says, let mm -hmm. me think about it, let me talk to my husband, et cetera. Shouldn't we follow up? I was taught that and we did a whole mm -hmm. show on this, by the way, Angela, I was taught that it can take 14 touches to, to get someone to <laughs> I buy. love that. Yeah. Shh, don't tell anybody there's a better way. Yeah. Um, I, 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 yes, I know that's what's taught and it's anywhere between 15, 16. Number one, that's because they were very ineffective on the first phone call. That's number one. Number two is because they were focusing on closing in sales versus serving people. It is a completely different conversation when you're there to help them solve the problem versus getting a sale. So if you're going to choose the path where you're trying to close, you're going down that path. Yes, you might need to follow up 15 times. But if you are also focusing on let's solve the problem and you simplify the problem down to problem solution, do you want it? Now you can make that decision now. So in terms of that, that's really the best way that we look at doing it. And yes, there are some that don't, they have a condition, which is different than an objection, meaning I've had people where their wallets were stolen. They were at the police station. And I mean, crazy stuff happened. You know, I get it. And conditions, well, those people, it's their responsibility to call back and get our help. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that's the sort of thing too, that getting back to Kimberly, when is it convincing? It's kind of like that. If you're having to convince, very likely you're trying to close. If you are there helping them get clarity and helping them enroll in their dream, now you're on the right track. So if you're convincing and you want their dream more than they do, you're in sales mode, commission breath mode. So the biggest check-in is getting all the way back. Remember the point of the call, get to the truth, love them to the truth, walk them past their fear and enroll them in their dream. That's what the call should be about. So Mark, Tony just said something really funny. She said, I saw the 15 touches thing on a webinar this week and I left. I'm almost 50. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so good. Yeah, I mean, Tony. that's exactly, that's exactly right. Because you I mean, think about it guys here at Clients on Demand, we have what 30 people a day, right? Reaching out to, to talk to us about working together. Right. And so we have time to have like one conversation with that person, maybe two, if there's some sort of extraordinary circumstance, but for the most part, it's a one conversation. That's it. And so if we had to follow up 15 times with each person, I mean, I can't even do the math. Like, what is that? Like 150, t I mean, that's, th I mean, 30 times 15. I mean, that's, that's uh, 400 some touches. Like that's insane. Every day, how the hell is that going to work? So if you, but, but, but you guys have to understand that if you're doing this the way we're talking about, where you're creating authentic rapport and your intention is in the right place and you're here to serve the client, not to sell the client. And because all this stuff stacks on each other, guys, and we're just all mm -hmm. we have time to do to, on these shows is just kind of touch on these concepts. But when we do when we train on this stuff, we go really deep into it. So you get it. But if, if all of those things are aligned properly, then you get the enrollment and it's easy and it's effortless and it feels good. You know, one of the things about clients on demand that uh, is just not true at other coaching programs is and you guys will see this if you look at some of our client testimonials and, and reviews and things like that. Our clients thank their salesperson. Our clients mm -hmm. thank their enrollment coach. Now that's unheard of. 
like someone signs up for our program, you know, three months later, they have a, you know, b b you know, their business is crushing it. Everything's going great. They come back to le to give us some feedback and they thank the person who originally enrolled them. How often does that happen? It doesn't happen if I feel pressured. It doesn't happen if I feel like I got pushed into it. It only happens if I feel like the person I was talking to was genuinely on my side. And mm -hmm. that's the experience I want you to have with your clients where yes, they're making a big investment. Yes, they're doing it on the first call, but you know what? They feel great about it because they sensed that you care and it came through at every level of the call. Make sense? And it all starts with your belief about it too. If you believe you need 15 touches, you will never be effective at enrolling people on one call. Right. So you need to make sure your beliefs are in the stack. And then there's another question here, which I loved um, that he asked about, um, let me see if I can't scroll up. He had asked about how long is the call? Well, there's another myth in there. And this is how a lot of the coaching has been sold over the, the last 10 years was come on for a free coaching call. And then they get on there and they're going to spend one, two hours, three hours for free, hoping to razzle dazzle you. And then hopefully you think I'm so good. You're going to want to hire me. And then they like, you know, what do you think? And, you know, and, and that's kind of how it's been done. And that really works to the narcissist coach uh, salespeople that are out there. You know, there's, there's a group of them that they like to dazzle people with their bullshit. You can bypass that whole thing if you focus on what's the problem, let's solve it, and let's see if we can help you. Yeah, and 100%. You don't, you know, so that's, that's another area to answer that. Again, we can get to the truth on almost any call in about 45 minutes. Yeah, we, we, me and Mark, we actually, um, we got this amazing, cool, cool database program for our sales record. So now we can like see our average call Everything. length. I mean, all this stuff, it's really Pause cool. Length, yeah. and, and what was amazing is that 46 minutes is the average call, which how great is that? Now, sometimes they go a little longer and sometimes they're shorter, but it's like you are having a real conversation with someone, a conversation that benefits you greatly, that benefits them greatly, that gets them clear on what's going on, and that sets up the coaching relationship in a beautiful way, or even the professional relationship if you're not a coach. And on that first conversation, they're enrolling with you at 3000 or 5000 or 10000 or whatever your, your program costs. Like you, It doesn't get any better than that, but there's almost nobody who has it dialed in that way. That's right. So yeah. yeah, there was a couple other questions I know, but we're at the top of the hour too. So we're going to, yeah. So guys, that's going to do it for us today. Listen, if you want to learn this process, if you want to learn how to enroll clients on the first conversation so that it doesn't suck and it feels good for you and for the client so that they're enrolling with you on that very first call and they're thanking you for it, then I want to invite you to go to clientsondemand.com forward slash talk book an appointment to talk to us. We can look at your business. We can look at your marketing. We can look at your sales process, your ads, and we can get into all that stuff. You can tell us what's working and what's not working. And if we can help you solve those problems and get where you want to go, we're going to tell you about how we can help you do that. And if we can't, like I just spent 20 minutes talking about, we are going to let you know that too. So guys, you guys are all superstars. Thank you so much for joining us today. Mark, thank you for your expertise. And guys, go get them, guys. Right here in the comments on Facebook, we got a bunch of... Uh, bunch of clients like Lucy's here, Christina's here. Gemini. Uh, yeah. All these people are yeah. talking about, you know, hey, I've done this and it works. So you guys know yeah. that it definitely works. So it's a totally new way of doing this. And there's a lot of people that talk about serving. There's a lot of people that talk about putting the client first, but very, very few people are doing it for real in their own business and have how have empowered all of their clients to do it as well. And we have, and uh, that's why these conversations it, are. It feels good. It feels good for you. It feels good for the coach. It feels good for the client. And now when they show up in the program, they're ready to get results because they were not hoodwinked. They were not pressured into the program. So guys, there is a better way. You know, the old way is dying. Start embracing what you already know. People are tired of being sold, talked to, talked down to. They need help. Go find them and help them and watch how it transform your conversations. That's it, guys. Clientsondemand.com forward slash talk. We will catch you guys on the next show. Bye-bye, guys.